say they're not they're not interested in esoteric wisdom. Right, they're not, because it would mean the end of their egotistical ways. Should, it's a threat it, to their egos. No, could it be that the esoteric wisdom is somehow phrased in a way that doesn't seem very practical? Sure, exactly. That, that's it and also. It could be phrased another way, right? Well... Or why not? They would have to be willing to come to the conclusion that they're not living right. And most people aren't. They think they're living right. They think they know the true meaning of happiness. Well, they, uh, everybody probably agrees that there could be some a few touches, you know. They could touch it up a little bit because they're doing that every day. They're trying to trying to repair their life, right? But yet they they, they somehow believe that admitting that I'm, I'm bankrupt in, in, in my spiritual life or whatever you want to call it is somehow going to make it even worse. But yeah, but what they want to do is they want to trade one opinion for another opinion. They don't want to leave all p opinions behind and come to the true facts and the truth of, of what life is really all about. You know, they want to go from being a, a Democrat to a Republican or from a Christian to a Muslim. Those are human level opinions that really don't take you any higher in your level of consciousness. Somehow you have to give up knowing in order to find something new or something greater, right? Sure, you have to go to the great unknown, and most people fear going there. So you have to be willing to, like, kind of experiment new territory. Yeah, just drop all your previous ideas of what you thought life was really all about, you know? And okay, most people now, aren't willing to abandon those. Yeah, but that's a big challenge. Isn't there a way a, we could ease yeah, it's into it? scary to most people. Isn't there a way we could ease, ease into it? Well... You could, but it usually has to come from the person himself when they experience a severe crisis or an extreme suffering of some kind. That'll force them to want to see things differently. That's one way that uh, lets them uh, consider that, right? Yeah, or when you get so disillusioned with everything that you previously thought was a rightful way of doing things. You have to become so disillusioned. That means you're willing to shed your illusions and come to reality. So that's a very personal thing because leaders of our society, uh, well, they can't even afford to have a, a doubts like that because people will uh, not keep them as leaders if, sure. they, if they look doubtful. Exactly. And so then somehow uh, people that are uh, experiencing an internal crisis, uh, they're not very persuasive uh, to make a movement or anything. This can't be a movement. It's just a personal it has to be a yeah, person yeah. on the personal level, yeah. yes. So somehow it sounds like that this is never going to really affect society or it's going to be a long, long time. It won't affect the great masses of people, but individuals who are tired of themselves as they are will awaken to see that the only true change that can occur is a change in human nature, not a change in society. You know, the great masses of people, they don't want the truth. They run from the truth. So now I've noticed that a lot of people that are seeking uh, something new or kind of like uh, feeling the pain of something old uh, don't feel like uh, activating themselves in, in many ways. They kind of retract from society and maybe even their energy, their internal energy kind of dissipates. It might even go to depression or something like that. Now, but I want to say this, that you ask uh, how to make this occupy into a teachable moment. Sure. So then for you, you feel activated uh, and I feel activated because I'm down here to uh, make a difference so then uh, how does it get to a point where we can actually get kind of charged up and want to uh, want to involve ourselves and uh, engage uh, and uh, where's that point where people uh, don't want to engage or don't feel they have the power or the, or the energy to do it well when you're living a purposeful life then that creates the energy that you need to pursue the goals that you seek. But you have to realize most people aren't living a purposeful life. You know, they're living that type of life of quiet desperation that I think it was, was it Walt Whitman or uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson spoke of, you know, people leading quiet lives of quiet desperation, you know, just uh, living from invented activities. Every well, they're day. just trying to get by. In other yeah, words. right. Living from invented, invented activities that carry them through another pointless day. You know, but when yeah. you live a purposeful life, you, you don't experience depression or any type of negativity. You, you're energizing. You're charged, you know? Well, who lives a purposeful life? It sounds because uh, many times the people that talk that way, uh, then they tell you about being a Christian or being uh, No, uh, it has nothing. Not that. It's not religion. No, no. You know, happiness... It has nothing to do with acquired ideas and opinions, even if those ideas and opinions seem pious. 
you know, that's not happiness. That's not where uh, true inner uh, joy comes from that allows you to express itself outwardly and in and, and purposeful actions. You know, so uh, it's just like I said, religion is just an opinion. It's a human level opinion. So in other words, uh, that uh, uh, religious tenets have been put to us as a society and somehow we have to try them on and test them out and then find out for ourselves that it didn't, it didn't really deliver like the promise. Right. See if there's any truth to them because you can always prove a truth, but you can't prove a lie. So if our religious tenets are truthful, then they work. They actually work to help you in your daily life, you know? It's not just thinking about the afterlife or, you know, where you're going to go. You know, that's, that's, that's not the purpose of life, to try to figure that out. Let's say uh, you're a happy person and you do have a feel a purpose. And, you know, you don't have well, to... I'm s- getting there. Yeah, you know, at yeah, least you I know which direction yes no. to go in. But would that, uh, would you be uh, motivated to participate in uh, politics? Not as long as you have unconscious human beings involved in politics. No. You know, it's a social lie that the majority of people are right. Only a conscious human being is right, and he's one in a million. But even just saying that is already participating in politics. If you said that, that uh, we want to find uh, politicians that have some uh, acknowledgement toward uh, consciousness, toward uh, uh, some connection toward all strata of society, already that would be a political action. You wouldn't have to run for office or you wouldn't have to join somebody's team. No, you could just point certain things out, point certain out, truthful right? things out, yeah. yeah. But then, you stand back from the politics itself and trying to win popularity contests by being a politician or trying to appeal to people's illusions because that's what politicians do. They appeal to the lies that other people live from. And whoever appeals to the majority lies win the election, you know? So I wouldn't be a part of that. Yeah. But somehow somebody has to do it, right? Because otherwise, yeah, they, people our, that's our system, right? Yeah, that's our system. You know, uh, I think Winston Churchill said it, you know, when he said that democracy is the worst political system around until you look at all the others, you know? <laughs> so, you know, yeah, you know, you need some type of system to, uh, to govern people who can't live in self-government, you know? So, yeah. Well, I mean... Uh... I don't know that where our society is enough complex that we need a lot of services that we can't really self self govern. That we can obey laws by ourselves and we can respect sure, our fellow and, man by ourselves. Sure, and half the laws on the books you don't even need, you know. So no, I agree. Uh, it's it's just a matter of bringing people to self awareness and self understanding, and that way you'll have so many changes you can't imagine, you know. It, any change that, does, like I said, any change that doesn't involve a change in human nature is really no change at all. You're just rearranging toy blocks. Okay, now you give these unconscious people more money. What are they going to do with it? You know, are they going to do anything correctly with it? You know, unearned benefits corrupt human nature, especially those who are in moral decay. And the welfare system has already proven that. You know, you just can't give unconscious immoral people unearned benefits and expect them to do the right thing. Uh, but remember, like, uh, the whole capital structure of our, of our uh, country is based on a certain institutions that say that banking and interest and, and dividends and all that stuff, and those create a positive feedback loop that keep building up wealth until, until it's bigger and bigger. Now, can you say that that's really earned, or is that just kind of like a, a side effect of an institution it's a, that we made? It's a side effect of a capitalist system, but it can be beneficial if the, the created wealth is used to benefit other people who have been disadvantaged or who have lost their way, you know. But you don't give them permanent uh, benefits. You you don't keep giving them benefits week after week, month after month, you know. So you don't do that. Yeah, but that's what we do. That's what we do. and Because, like, for instance, capital capital gains tax is... Tax is fifteen percent, and uh, tax on your on your on a medium income is thirty percent. Thirty percent, yeah. So then, I mean, we're 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 favoring wealth gap you know, by by double. Sure, sure. The, the wealthier getting, are, the richer getting richer, right? Yeah. They have two economies: an economy for the rich and an economy for everybody else. And uh, rich people aren't going to commingle their wealth with the wealth of everybody else, you know, because they rely upon their money or identification to such a degree that they would never jeopardize it by putting it with the 
the rest of society's money. But we could stop uh, favoring wealth so much, like with higher an inheritance tax. Yeah, sure. And with uh, higher capital gains tax. Sure, yeah. Stuff like that. Sure. And then, uh, then it wouldn't build so fast, and maybe it would dwindle a little with inheritance taxes. And yeah, it would. Yeah, it would lessen uh, uh, the income gap. Yeah, yeah. you know, and make See, it more I, I'm not really trying to just say the income gap is a wrong thing, and we should lessen the income gap. What I'm saying is that wealth has grown beyond the community. See, because if I was a big uh, industrialist in Chicago. I would do everything I could for the universities of Chicago, sure. for the people of Chicago, for the streets of Chicago. Sure. But if I was an industrialist that owned uh, a big industry in 50 towns, then I would start to play arbitrage between the towns, and I'd try to hold them hostage, and I'd say, look, uh, you guys are small potatoes here, and if you don't give me a tax break and uh, give me all these benefits and all this stuff, I'm moving out, and I'm just going to put a gun to your head. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, anyhow, I want to move to a non-union town. Yeah. And uh, blah, blah, blah. And so sure. then when the capital outgrows the community is what I say, then it's gone too far. But, I mean, we don't have a system of natural breaks for that. You know, we wanted capital because we want the communities mm -hmm. uh, to have enough capital and those that are active in a community to have enough capital to uh, modernize and keep up with, a, with, uh, with changes in society because they need liquidity and, and capital to do that. But when they got... When they outgrew the community, and now they've even outgrown the nation, uh, because they have no nation. Mm -hmm. uh, now that kind of capital still gets the same beneficial rules uh, to keep uh, accumulating as uh, the other capital uh, that we we needed when there was you know thousands of industries and all kinds of, and then when there was thousands of people doing the same thing, it, it, it really made sense to have free competition. But when that gets down to six or seven or four or five companies, you know, that have all the news media, that had have all the oil companies, that have all the telephone companies, that have all the communication companies. I mean, uh, then something uh, we can't just say do whatever you want. I agree. You know, uh, you, you're saying when companies consolidate or um, buy each other merge. Out. Yeah, they merge. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, companies don't add value anymore. Uh, right. They just uh, buy each other out, and then they they, they cut off expenses. They they, sure, they, they fire start people. Laying, yeah, they start laying off a lot of yeah. people. And so know? then that's how they make their money. Sure. Right. And then they eventually um, manage to take their. Uh, whatever manufacturing levels they have to other countries. To China, right? Yeah. Right. So anyhow, it, you know, adding value is not that important anymore at that level of business. Right, right. Or, or in many cases, you know, there's that kind of, there, there's those kind of people that that operate their business in, in that way, and they get they get very big, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how could we ever bring business back to to support a community? Who knows? I mean... Uh, well, it's something that's going to have to be thought about, you know, not by intellectuals, but by people who have wisdom more than uh, intellectual reasoning. You know, so not by the head alone. Huh? Somehow right. we have to have, have a you have connection. To, and, right, it has to go to a higher level of thinking. Right. You know, not just on the condition thinking of an intellectual. Can we just say? Uh, couldn't we have a kind of a tenant that uh, every citizen should have? You know, we couldn't guarantee it, but I mean, at least we could have the tenant that every citizen should have a creative outlet for his energy. And sure. If, yeah. and, if a gr and if a small but, group doesn't have it, then we should say, well, if if industry doesn't want to give it, then we should give it, or some some sure. Some, but it's, it's not something that should be proscribed by law or yeah. the government. Yeah, but you we got to make sure that we just don't ignore it and step over it. Right. By but, law. Yeah, yeah. But you can't yeah. make it a, a government mandate, though. Yeah, that no, you can't. That's a, no, no, but I, I'm sure you can't make it a mandate, but you could make it a goal. Sure, a goal. You yeah. could try to stimulate uh, uh, those areas around that, let's say, static strata of society, and then uh, try to break it open somehow. And we, I guess, we've done that many in many different ways, you know. But each individual that you could get to come to esoteric wisdom, they would be activated to do whatever is right and in their own self-interest, or and in the interest of others. You know, it, it activates you in so many ways you just can't imagine. It just awakens you to uh, possibilities that are just uh, beyond uh, conditioned minds. You know, it's beyond their perception to understand this. I'll say that one more time. Uh, you know, just a part about if people were led to what? Say if, if people were 
uh, allowed to uh, be taught esoteric wisdom. It would yeah. activate them in ways unimaginable. Yeah, now let's just say mind. what esoteric wisdom is or how it feels or what it is. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new way of thinking. It, it, it guides mankind upward toward an entirely new way of thinking. And since this new way contains no pretenses and no contradic contradictions, it produces ease and naturalness in whoever adopts it. You know, it just, it, it, it makes you feel different. You know, you think differently. You, you no longer think like an intellect. You don't think about uh, limitation. You know, it's sort of like Steve Jobs, you know, the way that he thought differently from the way that his co-workers and his employees thought. He said, no, you can't do this, you know? He said, no, we can't do this in, 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 in uh, two weeks. It's gonna take us two months. No, you can do it, you know? That's why he, he he, he had no no real, you know, he was uh, he was prickly toward people, and he just said, you know, you can do this, you know. You can do it is yeah. the message, right? Right. His mind was, his, was open because he didn't have the restrictions of conditioned thinking, you know. So it just changes you in ways that you can't imagine, you know. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Okay. I All do right. too. Take care. I'm going to look on your website, okay? Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right.